When Fano here on the East Coast call for an ambulance, they're not sure if one will make it. So because of people not being able to get access, quite a few have passed away for really no good reason other than isolation. I want to check your blood pressure. Yeah. So this small community of Tōrere, just outside of Wapotsuki, is stepping up, becoming medically trained as first responders. I'm no doctor or anything, but if I can just do a little bit to help someone, you know, but like maybe survive, then that's all worth it. They've even bought this old ambulance, which currently isn't roadworthy and needs hundreds of thousands of dollars to be brought up to standard. But it's Kayreen Tapuke's dream to see it serving her people. Well, we want to stock it up and put all our medical things in, just have everything ready, and then it can be used for emergencies, mm. uh, you know, and actually just transporting people. What is the reality of emergency services here in the area? We don't have an ambulance. We have one ambulance in Opotiki, and uh, that's on call. And then we have two in um, Whakatane and one in Kawaro. So it can take hours and mm. sometimes 10 minutes is all it takes if people have had heart yeah. attacks yep. uh, for them to pass away. The nearest town is Opotiki, which also has no hospital and limited a and &E services. If Fano have an emergency here, they face a mad dash 45 minute drive on rural roads to Fakatane Hospital. And there's currently only one ambulance for this remote region, which stretches to the East Cape, serving 13,000 people. We have barriers to resourcing, small communities do, and getting a technical knowledge at the level of doctors and paramedics. Here at Tōrere Marae, Kayreen Tapuke and Tracy Hillier have seen too many of their whānau die because emergency services didn't reach them. Dying of third world issues like an asthma attack, a heart issue, you know, it shouldn't be acceptable in this nation. So during the COVID-19 lockdowns, Naitai Iwi Authority decided to take charge of the health of its people. How can we make a difference in this space to train our own people, to support our people to engage in, in quality services? They teamed up with emergency medical trainers ProMed and Fitzidea Polytechnic to train locals to become first responders. When there's emergencies and that, we want to be there to help our family instead of waiting for, you know, services to get to us. It could be too late. And they now have the life-saving skills to assess medical and trauma conditions. So we wear the medical lens when we go around as first responders. It's all about medical needs of anyone and everyone. Mm. For our community and our hapu, our iwi, we're there for them and they know that. Mm. They have. The project has been supported by Stephen Dennett, the only fully qualified paramedic in the area. Today he's teaching first aid to a group of local farm managers. A cardiac arrest can happen just from the heart or it can happen secondary to trauma, hey? So we can have a car crash, for example. This is our second uh, first aid class that, that's come out of initially the COVID response from last year where we, we've worked with Fetidea and ProMed and uh, Naitai Iwi to create um, that partnership to ensure in the Māori communities that we're getting um, that education and awareness out there. We've seen someone choke, we're unable to dislodge it, we're calling for an ambulance. When that patient goes unresponsive, you're going to do chest compressions. What do you hope Fano take out of the course? Um, I, the willingness and ability, I think, to be confident and capable to help people in need, be it the Afano or a work member. One person who's benefited from the first aid training is local Komatua Jack Mihaide. He recently faced his own life and death situation after his face went completely numb. We'd done a uh, first aid course about two weeks before. The uh, trainer at the time said, don't piss her out. You're too far away. You can't guarantee the ambulance will get there on time. Go. So hopped in her vehicle and we left. His granddaughter drove him to Fakatane Hospital and he passed out from severe neck pain. 
Later, his doctor told him what he was experiencing. He called it a TIA. But for them, it's a, a mini strike. I, I had a mini strike. His sister, Ripeka Mihaire, says it's amazing to see the impacts of Naitai's investment into medical training. I mean, reality is he could have died. So I, I believe the likes of the iwi responders is very important because you're going to have them within your communities, people who know um, the signs. What would your advice be to other kaumatua who aren't looking after their health? The best thing for our own health and safety is to be honest. Right? Yes. Don't hide it, don't be a hero. I mean, most heroes are dead. Right? For Tracy Hillier, this is why she's developing a health system which empowers Māori. The system has shown they can't meet or don't have a desire to meet our needs. When our people start moving from sickness to actually seeking well-being, taking informed decisions about their well-being and not waiting and lying in bed, as most of our people do, they don't want to be a problem. They don't. And they choose a real passive role. But seeing them move into well-being and making choices to engage with specialist services is just so awesome. And it is starting to make a difference. Making a difference, which is keeping their people alive. Over the past year, how many lives do you think have been saved because of the training you've had? Four, since our course, since we took up this first responders, yep. And that's without any um, resources. It's just about doing what you were taught. I'd say at least two here. So that's six whanos that still have their loved ones. Yes. yes. Yeah. That's, that's huge. Mm. That's cool. Mm. Yeah. yeah. We think it's huge, dear. Yeah, it's mean. <laughs> <laughs>